What's going on everybody? So in this video, I wanna show you how to build a digital resume. So what we're gonna do here is take my personal resume as a reference. This is the resume I actually use. And we're just gonna go ahead and extract all the content that I have on it and make a digital version of that using HTML and CSS. And then we're gonna host it for free with GitHub Pages. So GitHub Pages is very easy to use. And by the end of the video, you're gonna have a live URL that you can share with everyone and a resume that's a little bit more stylish. So we're gonna have a light mode and a dark mode. I'll let you choose whatever one you want to use. So it's just gonna be a little bit of fun and easier to share what you have. Now, as far as using this in place of a portfolio website, I personally wouldn't recommend it. I still think you should have a portfolio website. So what I would do is actually link out to this digital resume from that portfolio site. But if you don't have a portfolio, go ahead and just use this for now and share this link with everyone, put it on your Twitter or wherever you want to, send it out to potential employers. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna take a quick moment and thank today's sponsor, Agora. So Agora is a real-time engagement platform that provides us with all the tools we need for building building out features like audio and video calling and real-time data signaling right into our apps. With Agora, you get SDKs and low-code tools to build out all sorts of video calling features like group chats with screen sharing and recording, streaming to third-party platforms like YouTube, and so much more. One of my personal favorite tools at Agora is the real-time messaging SDK, which if you've ever configured your own WebSockets or Socket server, you know can be a real pain to do. So I've actually used Agora's SDKs on this channel before for a tutorial that I did, so be sure to check that out and be sure to check out their website, agora.io. All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and go over a quick demo of what we have here and what we're about to build. So this is that live URL here. This is linked up in the video description and here is the actual digital resume. So I'll try to zoom in just to make sure you can see everything. And we also have a light mode version of that. So there's no theme toggler. Uh, essentially, all we're gonna do is just update the CSS variables. It's very easy to do. Uh, if you wanna add in that theme switcher yourself, you can do that. Otherwise, uh, just choose the one that you want and uh, stick with that. So whether it's light mode or dark mode, just pick it and that's what you're gonna have here. So um, we're gonna go through the content real quick. So here I have my social links here and I actually have my PDF version of this resume hosted. So this is my actual resume. I talked about this in the video where I go over resume structure. Uh, essentially, I have all my social links, my contact information, my website, and then my bio, skills and qualifications, tech stack, work history, and that's it. So that's my actual resume. Now, on my digital version of that, I did throw in an image. You don't need an image here, but uh, I just want to throw in a personal touch, add a little bit more. Other than that, this content's exactly the same right here. We have skills and qualifications. Uh, for the tech stack, what I did here, if you look at my resume, you'll notice that I bunched these up into categories like my languages, backend frameworks, front-end frameworks, and so on. So I basically just did the same here without listing what I'm actually doing here. So it's kind of assumed once you see Python, JavaScript, and Node.js, you know that these are languages and then databases are gonna be Postgres, Mongo, MySQL, and so on. Now we have the work history here. Then we have a section here that I didn't include on my resume and that's gonna be projects and accomplishments. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do here is put this on my resume just on another page. So if you wanna read more about what I've done um, on my resume, that'll be on another page. In here, you just go ahead and click on it. Here you can uh, explain a little bit more about that project, provide some source code, images, a live demo, uh, whatever you wanna do there, but that's always good to have on a resume. So let's go ahead and close this out here. Uh, if you want to find the source code to this, this will also be linked up and I'll probably even link up the source code here on the website somewhere. Maybe I'll just add it to it. But this is gonna be in the video description and in the provided article. So you can go ahead and find that, see how to set this up. And this is how we actually switch the themes here. So I actually put that into the readme file. So that's how you can modify the theme. And now let's get into the article. So. With this, I do have an article here, so there's that, not that much written content, but the good thing about this is we do have the structure of the video. So we're gonna create our files. Here you'll see the file structure, then the actual source code. I'll code this out from scratch, but there is gonna be times where it's gonna be nice to reference the code. For example, if I click on here, uh, this is on my dev.2 account. I can actually see what I'm trying to do here and use this as a reference. So while you're coding along, if you feel like you messed something up, uh, go ahead and just jump in here and get that code. So this goes all the way up to even hosting it. So if I go down to the bottom here, this is me hosting it on GitHub Pages. Essentially, this is what we're gonna be doing. I have the explanations and so on. So let's go ahead and start coding this up. I'm done explaining things. We'll close out the demos here. I'll make sure I open up VS Code, close out the source code, 
and I'll just leave the live demo open and the actual article as a reference here. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new file on my desktop here, wherever you're gonna have it. And let's just call this resume uh, website. We'll just do that. Instead of digital resume, uh, we'll just call it resume website. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up in our text editor. I'm gonna use VS Code here, so we'll find the folder here. I know it's a little bit messy on my desktop, but there's resume website. And here is our empty folder. So if we reference the article here, uh, we'll actually see the file structure. So we'll keep coming back to this article. I'd highly recommend you do too. Uh, essentially, I know the folder name is different, but we have our index.html file and assets folder with our PDF, our images folder, a styles folder with some styling, and then our picture. So let's go ahead and build that out. So we'll add in our index.html file to start. So index.html. And then after that, we want an assets folder. So we'll go ahead and add in a new folder, call that assets. In this assets folder, we want an images folder. So that's inside of there. And then we also want a styles folder. And then inside of styles, we want a main.css file. Okay, so for the actual images and PDF, if you have your own, go ahead and add those in. What I'm gonna do here is just show you how to reference this live link. Go ahead and grab this, and if you wanna use my image in my PDF, go ahead and do that too. So for this picture, we'll just open this up, and I should have a smaller version of that. There we go. So let's go ahead and save this. I had to lower the quality before the video, and we'll just add this into images. So go ahead and find this wherever you have it. It's on my desktop here. I open up the folder, go into assets, images, and then save that in there. So we'll see this inside of VS Code. There we go, it's profile pic right there inside of the images folder. And then if you want to use my resume as the reference here, go ahead and go to download resume and then download it, find the file that you wanna add this to. Again, we'll go to our website and this will just stick, this will just uh, remain inside of the assets folder. So the name is resume and we're just gonna keep that structure. So if you don't have your own, go ahead and just use these as the reference. All right, so let's go ahead and start building out our HTML. So if we go down here, this is the actual HTML code. So I'll copy some code blocks and then I'll also write a lot of my own. As far as the content, I'm just gonna go ahead and reference this. If you have your own stuff to write there, go ahead and do that too. Um, I'd be recommended actually that you put your own stuff, but I'll try to copy the content and stick to writing most of this out from scratch. So let's go ahead and open up our index.html. Now in most text editors, you can actually start writing HTML and it should auto complete it for you. So I'm gonna click on the sample and here it's just gonna go ahead and give me my head tag with a link to the CSS file. We'll close out the JavaScript one. We don't need that, our body tag and everything else in here. So if it didn't generate that for you, just go ahead and type that out. It's very simple to do. So we'll just go ahead and add in my title. Uh, for the CSS link, I do have to update this. So this is actually going into my styles folder, and then we'll go into main.css to follow this structure right here. So styles, main.css, and let's go ahead and start with the body. So inside of the body, what I'm gonna do here is start with a div. I know some people like to use a section tag to use semantic HTML. Uh, use that too, I guess I could just use a section tag, but we'll leave it like this. And we'll just start adding in our IDs and classes everywhere we need. So first thing I wanna do is create a main container for everything in my, uh, in my page here. So we just wanna wrap every item and we're trying to follow the, the BEM or BEM method. That's for a CSS uh, naming of classes and IDs. I probably didn't follow it that well. I'm not that familiar with, C oh, I'm pretty decent at CSS, but it's not my main thing is what I'm saying. So I try to keep up with the latest styles and technologies. So that's our main container. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a section and we'll open the site up in a second. So we'll create a section tag here. So we're starting to use some semantic HTML. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the ID of wrapper hyphen hyphen hero. So this will be the hero section. And I'm also gonna give this a class of section hyphen hyphen and then page. So make sure you're doing two hyphens there every time you do that. So the reason why I'm using this class is because I wanna be able to add in certain styling to every single section on the page. So that's gonna give us some padding and so on. So make sure to add that. All right, so inside of this main container, we have our hero section. So we'll add in some space here. We'll save that. And inside of the hero, we have an image here. So we wanna go ahead and do that. We'll add the image in here, close it off. 
And for the actual image, we're gonna go into the images folder. And luckily for me, it auto completes. So we'll go into images. Actually, we're going into assets and then images, and then we're going into the profile pick right there. So that file structure, if you set it up correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up actually. So I'm actually gonna use, um, what the heck was it, uh, live server. So we'll go into index.html and open it up with live server. If you have VS code, that should open that up for you. Otherwise, just go to the folder here and just click on index.html. You're just gonna have to refresh on every single uh, change though. So we'll close that out and we're gonna use live server. So this is our website right now. So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Uh, let's go ahead and move the text editor to the left here and then the actual result to the right. And I'll just resize my face here so it doesn't get in the way. So we'll just try to move myself completely out of here, but hopefully you don't get too lonely if I'm not that visible. <laughs> okay, so we'll save that. Uh, after that in our section tag, uh, I'm actually gonna resize the code a little bit. Hopefully you can still see that, I'll zoom in. And let's just continue here. So after that, we want another div. We won't give it any class or ID. This is just gonna be a wrapper for our heading, our bio and our email. So we'll create a paragraph tag and this is gonna be the ID of bio, not boy, but bio, I-O. And at this point, this is where you need to write your own content. Try to add in a sentence, uh, keep it very simple, maybe two sentences, but um, I like to make sure it's very simple and I also added in some links here. So if you wanna use my code exactly, uh, go into this section and just copy everything from here. So we'll go into software developer. Then I have some links in here to my Udemy course, my YouTube channel and my company profile. So all the way to the closing paragraph tag. So we're going to grab that, move this over and let's go ahead and paste that in right here. So I'm going to use that. Uh, you obviously don't need to use that, put your own in there. But if you want to use mine as a reference, go ahead and do that. So we'll open up our project. If I save that, there we go. There's my bio with the links here. Okay, so after that, we want to go ahead and add in our email. So let's go ahead and do Dennis at DennisIV.com. That's going to be my website. And I also want to use a pointing emoji just to make it easier to find. So what I'm going to do is just copy this emoji directly from here and just paste that in. So that should add the emoji to our page. All right. So what's next let's go ahead and look at the article so after that that's our hero section we're going to create another section for our socials list so if you look at the demo here we have this section right here where we have the uh, all the social links from youtube to my resume github and everything like that so whatever you have go ahead and add that in here so make sure you're still in the main container and let's go ahead and create another section and let's see let's go back to the actual display site. What I'm gonna do here is actually move this over to the left and then bring the live demo in here because it's messing up my ability to look at the article here. Okay, so we're gonna add an ID of section page. So this will be section hyphen hyphen page. And in here, we'll just add in a div. This div will have the ID of socials list. So socials hyphen hyphen list save that and then for the actual items here we're just going to go ahead and create a link so we'll do href and what i would recommend you do here is go ahead and close off that link and then add in something like uh, we'll just do youtube whatever you're putting in here um, for now we'll just throw in the pound symbol but i would highly recommend you do target underscore blank or target and then underscore blank like that. So what this will do is make sure that when you click on this link, it takes you to another page or another tab as opposed to sending you away to another page. There's a good chance that whoever clicks on this wants to still view your site. They just wanna also check this part out. So let's go ahead and modify the content. So I have YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub. We'll just change this really quick. So we'll just do Twitter linked in and then GitHub, I guess GitHub is kind of a social account. And I'll save that so now you see that appear there and then we'll just do download resume. So resume will actually link up right now. So for this, we're just gonna go ahead and go into the assets folder and then resume.pdf. So if I click on download resume, that should open up in a new tab and there is my resume. So perfect, we see all that there. And that is the social link section. So we'll actually style this in a second, but let's just get the top part out of the way. So we'll add in another section here. Uh, this is gonna be 
given the class of section page. In fact, I actually forgot to do something for the socials. Actually, no, that's fine. So we'll just do class of section hyphen hyphen page. And then at this point, we're just gonna add in our skills and qualifications. So we'll just go ahead and create an H2 tag. So this will be the header. We'll just do skills and qualifications. Can never spell. So there we go. We have skills and qualifications. And then we'll add in a UL tag. Now, if you don't have skills and qualifications, you can ignore this part. But uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is actually go back to this article and use what I have here. So if you have your own, definitely put your own on here. But at this point, you don't need to write out all of this manually or you don't need to see me do that. So we'll just copy this content. So let's copy that and we'll paste that into the UL tag here. So those are gonna be the LI tags. We'll fix the indentation. We have the emoji and there we go. So let's see, let's make sure you can see everything. Perfect, my face isn't in the way and let's continue. So that's it for the HTML in this section. So let's quickly style it and then we'll go ahead and start adding more content. So our CSS link is, or CSS file is linked up right here. So we don't need to worry about that right now. Let's go into the actual file that's in styles main. And I'm just gonna start styling this out. What I'm gonna do is set some main styling for the entire page. We'll set up some CSS variables and then we'll actually go in and start styling each section here. So let's go ahead and do that if we go to this part in the article. So let's move away from the HTML. Right now, what I'm gonna do is bring in an import. So typically you would go to Google Fonts, you would find that font and bring it in. Uh, I already have it here, so we'll copy that. And I'm also gonna copy the CSS variables. So if you don't know what CSS variables are, essentially you can set up a variable that you can reuse everywhere throughout your text. So let's say you want to change all the text color in your website. Rather than going through every section, you simply update the variable and then later on through your code, you actually just use that variable. So here we have background color, we use the main background color. So whatever we set here, that's gonna be modified. So let's actually do this. For the variables and the import, let's copy that. So we'll bring that in here and we'll just paste that. So I'll save it, it doesn't change anything and now we're gonna start setting up the actual page content or the actual styling for the entire page. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because this is a CSS file, it should be easier to fix since we don't have all the indentation and I wanna make sure I'm still recording. I've done that before where I filmed and it wasn't recording. So for the main body content, let's go ahead and style everything on the page. We'll just do star, we'll do font family. And for this, we're just gonna go ahead and use the font that we imported. And the actual font is right here. So it's Redex, if that's how you say it, and then pro. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So we'll do read X space and then pro, save it. And there we go. So that styles all the font on our page. And let me move over to the left a little bit. Okay, so that's the font. Uh, next thing I wanna do is add in some line height for all the text on the page. We'll just do 1.5 EM. That should create some spacing. Then for box sizing, let's just do border box. So box sizing, and then we'll just auto complete that with border box. So that just makes sure that uh, when we have items inside of a div, I won't go into the details of it, but it makes sure that things don't overflow and stuff and it doesn't add in padding on its own. I'm sure there's more to it, but that's my rough explanation. So after that, we'll just go ahead and do color. And for this, we're actually gonna use a CSS variable. So to actually use a CSS variable, here we have our main text color, that's the color. Uh, that's all surrounded by root right there. And then we have the secondary, main link color, border color, and background color. So this is how we're actually gonna change the themes is using these variables. So we wanna use the main text color. So we'll just do main text color. And there we go, so it changed up a few colors here. So now we have all the colors with that black color. It's just zero, zero, zero. And then let's go ahead and set some body colors. So for the body, we're just gonna set a background color. At this point, it's all white and I do have a different shade for that white color. Uh, it's kind of like an off shade. It's not really an eggshell, but uh, that's what we're using. And for that, we're just gonna do var and we'll do hyphen, hyphen, main BG color. So if we save that, you won't really see anything, but it will style it. And then for dark mode, that's when it's obviously gonna be obvious. Okay, so we have the body and let's style all the paragraph tags, span tags and LI tags. Now, if I missed any uh, smaller text tags, I'm sure I did, uh, just go ahead and add those in there. But basically any text that's not like a heading text or a strong or a bold text, this is gonna be the styling for that. So for these colors, we're just gonna go ahead and do color and we'll just do var and this will be secondary text color. 
Okay, so it's probably not that easy to see, but I've noticed it. So it changed that. It's kind of like a grayish color for some of these. Uh, just to test that, we can just do something like red. So all the secondary text is now that color. Uh, it's still like a dark color, but just a little bit different tint. Okay, so we have the color. Uh, let's set all the font size. We're gonna use EM here, and we'll use one point. Let's see what I set this at. We'll just do one EM. So that's equivalent to about 16 pixels if you're using pixels. Okay, so that's the text here. Let's style all the links here. So for the links, we'll do text decoration. I want to make sure there is no underline. I don't like that, so we'll just do none. So these these links right here, we'll just go ahead and remove that. And it also removed all that decoration there. We'll add its own styling. And for the actual links, we'll just do color. And then we'll do var. And I want my links to look a little bit different. I, I do want there to be separation. So we'll just do hyphen hyphen main text color okay so this should be a different shade from everything else our main link color actually so we'll just go back here not text i thought that looked weird okay so there we go so now all the links look different on the page now we'll also change the font weight so we want to make sure they're a little bit thicker so we'll do font weight and we'll just do 500 all right there we go that's the links so last thing we need is the li tags and we'll actually go in and style up the actual specific page sections so we'll just do li and for this i just want to change the line height here so i want to make sure that we have more separation between all of these right here so we'll do line height that's going to be 1.9 em and there we go so create a little bit of separation <clears throat> okay so we have the li tags and now let's go into the section so right now if i go full screen here if i zoom out You'll notice that everything is lined up to the left. So if I change that to full screen, it's all lined up to the left and I wanna actually create some kind of uh, width to this and then center everything. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is actually go back and forth now because we do want to see this part right here. So for this section, we'll just go ahead and take this ID right here. So container hyphen hyphen main. So we'll bring that in, that's an ID. And we'll just do max dash width of 700 pixels. That'll add a width in, so we'll push the content together. Then I want to center it, so margin, zero, and then auto. So that should push everything into the middle. Let's check it out. And there we go. So that created better centering there. Okay, so I'm still zoomed in, so it's actually going to be like that wide when you actually see the site. But because uh, some people watch this on their phone, we want to make sure that we get accurate representations. All right, so we have that main container and let's go ahead and style up the actual page section. So we'll bring this back in here now that we have the width part figured out. So you still see that that's centered. So at this point, let's go ahead and go into each page section. So we'll go into section. So section hyphen hyphen page. And I want to add some space between each section. So that's why I added this class to every single part of the page. So we have it in every section. Um, that was supposed to be a class actually. So give me a second section page, change that to a class right there. And this one's also a class. Okay, so we had to modify that it made a quick mistake there or simple mistake. So let's do section hyphen hyphen page and we'll just do padding top. So padding top and that's gonna be one EM. So we'll see some padding there and we'll also do padding bottom. All right, so one EM, and that's gonna create some more separation. Again, right now, as you're typing it out, and if you're in full screen, then it actually probably looks better for you, but that should have created some good separation between all that, and let's continue here. So with that, and again, I'm referencing this article here, so I'm actually going down the line and I'm just trying to type it out, so I'm not just copying and pasting, but you'll actually see a lot of the code here, so reference that, use that to your advantage if it's there. Okay, so, we have the section uh, at this point, let's go ahead and go into the actual particular sections of our website. So I want to make sure to style everything that's uh, more global contained her. That does not look right. So let's try to fix that. Maybe you noticed that. So that's container and I need to fix that spelling here. What the heck did I do there? Okay, I broke something. So container and then hyphen hyphen main. All right, we're back. Cool. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so we'll go back into our CSS. We have our section page. Now, after that, let's go into this hero wrapper here. So we'll just go ahead and do pound wrapper hyphen hyphen hero. So that's this main section. That's all wrapped in this div right here. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And for this wrapper, uh, let's go ahead and display everything as flex. So we'll do display flex. So flex will inline everything. So it goes ahead and shoves everything to left to right. So we display that. And then I wanna make sure that everything is centered horizontally. So we'll do align items center. There we go. So you see that text get pushed down. So that's why we wrap this inside of a container. So now they're equally lined up. And after that, let's go ahead and add in some space between them. And for this, instead of using padding, because we're using Flexbox, we'll just do gap and this will be 4 EM. So this will create some space between them. So perfect, that looks good. Okay, so you should be able to see that. I'll try to zoom out a little bit. So that's our wrapper hero. Let's go ahead and go into the actual bio. So for the bio, we have an ID there. That's called bio. Uh, I just wanna change the font weight. I wanna make sure the font weight in this specific section is gonna be a little bit lighter. So we'll just do 300. And there we go, that looks a little bit different. And what the heck happened to my header? I guess I never put that in there, or maybe I deleted it. So let's go ahead and add that. So we'll do H1. All right, there we go. So that's our header, I guess I missed that. I didn't realize that. Okay, so we have the bio there. And I also wanna set the same font weight for all the links here. So let's just do that for now. Um, Let's see, how do I wanna do this? I, I think for now, we'll just go ahead and leave that font weight and then we'll change it up. So for these specific links, I wanna leave it like that. Okay, so let's go into the username now. So we have our username. So I do wanna change up a few things. I wanna set that font. So the username should actually be at the top here and I was supposed to add in an ID here. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So the username and this is gonna be above here. We'll just do username. And for this, I wanna set the font size to 48 pixels. Uh, typically we use EM, so they respond to screen readers and so on, uh, but 48 pixels is pretty big, so we'll just leave it in pixels. I guess what we could do is do 48 pixels to EM and look up that conversion, so to EM. Okay, let's see, how much is that? 48 pixels. Convert. That's not right, one EM. You know what, we're just gonna leave it at, yeah, we'll just leave it at pixels. I don't feel like going through this. So we have 25 is 1.5. So uh, let's just do three EM. Let's just see if, it's, it's, if it gives us the same size. We'll just do three EM. Yeah, that looks about right. So we'll leave it like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on from here. So that's it for the username, in fact, um, Username should be user hyphen name. So we'll change that too, just because I wanna follow the same code formatting that I have in the source code. And let's also add in some line height. So we'll do line height and then we'll just do one EM. All right, so we're following that format. After the bio, we'll go ahead and go into the profile picture. So I wanna make sure this is a circle. So we'll do profile underscore pig. And that should actually be, let's see, how do I call that here? I never give it an ID, so we'll just do profile dash pick. So I missed that part, got too excited. So we'll do ID equals profile dash pick like that. Okay, so inside of the main.css file, we'll just do dash like that. And then we're gonna do border radius. This is gonna be 50%, so that'll make it a complete circle. Uh, we'll set a height and width. We'll just do width of 150 pixels and then a height of also 150 pixels. And if you have an image that maybe starts getting distorted by this, what you can actually do is just do object and then fit and then we'll just do cover. So we'll just make sure that it covers up the entire page. So if you notice, it does change up the position of the picture. If you have a picture that's like a rectangle, it might start distorting it. So you can do object fit cover and that will actually, I think focus in on the center of the actual picture. Okay, so we have the profile picture, time to move on to the next section. We'll go into email. And this is gonna be more relevant to when we actually go into dark mode here. 
but we want to make sure that the color for the email is actually changing to also so we'll just do var and we'll just do main text color I need some water here sorry I hate uh, drinking water on camera it always sounds really funny but we'll get over it <coughs> okay so we have the email uh, social list let's go ahead and do that so we'll do socials dash list and how did I call that variable so socials hyphen hyphen list okay we'll throw that in and in socials list uh, they're already in line but what I want to do here is actually separate my separate mine so we'll just do display flex so we'll inline them and then that way I can actually use uh, justify content and we'll just do uh, let's see I want to do space between so that's gonna give us some space I do want to make sure that we have some gaps here so we'll do column gap and technically I don't really need this right now because I have enough separation but for those of you that may not have that many social links uh, this is gonna be relevant so make sure you pay attention here and I'll show you what's going on so add in the gap and then after that we'll just do flex wrap and then we'll do wrap okay so why we needed that is if you remove some of these social links so let's just go ahead and comment out these right here so let's say we only have two let's say we only have our twitter and our github now you have this space in between so with that what you could do is just go ahead and remove justify content or you can just do flex start and that's going to go ahead and start from left to right so that space looks kind of weird so now it looks a little bit better if you have the two links right here and then the gap gives you spacing between those because I have more space, I'm going to leave it at space between, but I'll leave that part up to you. So however you want to do that, just want to make sure that anybody with less social links uh, doesn't, so it doesn't look funny there. So we'll just go ahead and undo that space between, and I'm going to undo that comment. And there are all my links. Okay. So back into the CSS, we have our socials list. Uh, we also want to style up these actual links. So what I'm going to do here is go into socials list and I'm going to style up the actual link in there so we'll just chain that and we'll take the a tag there and we'll just do let's see list style hold on what am i doing here so socials list um i want to style these actual links now let's see what i did here so i did font weight and i don't think i need to set that so i'm gonna leave that alone uh for the colors everything looks good i think i'm good here let's just change the font size so we'll do font dash size and we'll just leave this at 0 0.9 em so that should give us about 14 pixels in size so we'll just leave it like that for socials list i have some code in there but i don't think that's relevant if i if i see an issue later we'll fix it and i'll just modify the actual article to represent that so that's socials list uh, we also want to make sure that when we hover over these we see some kind of change so we'll just do socials socials dash list and then we'll take the a tag and then we'll do on hover and at this point what I want to do is uh, change up the color so what I'm actually going to do is change the color here because I do think that has something to do with how we change the color when we go to dark mode so I want to set that too so let's just go ahead and do var and then this will be hyphen hyphen secondary text color no that does not look right at all I think I want to do main link color Okay, so we'll leave it like that for now. And if we have an issue, we'll fix that. Now, when we hover over these, what I want to do here is go ahead and change the actual link color. So that, okay, that was correct. Secondary color, so we want them dark, but when we hover over them, we want to change this color to give us the main link color. That's what it was. So I shouldn't want too many colors. So as I hover over these, it should give us the main link cover. Uh, for some reason, it's not doing that. I guess in dark mode it's going to look a little bit better but if we just try this let's just do red so it's obvious so when we hover hmm, for some reason that's not working socials hyphen hyphen list there we go so we have that okay so there we go the link color actually changes and i want to make sure it's a smooth transition notice how it changes really fast we'll just do transition and then we'll do zero point 3s 
Okay, now we have some kind of delay. All right, so we have that all set up. We have the hover size there, everything looks good. Uh, let's just go ahead and change up these bullet points because we already have those check marks. We don't need this stuff right here. So at this point, we'll just do qualifications list. So we have qualifications list and we'll just do list style and this will be none. So it's gonna remove these bullet points right here. So there, there we go, should be the case. Qualifications list, list style is none. Maybe I didn't put the actual class there. So let's see, we have qualifications. Yeah, I never put that on. So this is supposed to be the ID of qualifications hyphen hyphen list. And voila, there we go. All right, so this part is looking a lot better. It's all up to par. And at the next point in this article, we're gonna go down to adding dark mode. So let's go ahead and set this right now. And I'm gonna set this, you can continue working in light mode if you want, but from now on, I'm gonna work in dark mode. Now there's different ways of doing this, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and add in variables for light and dark mode. And then we still have our original variables and the only way the only thing that we need to change them is to change the value by referencing another variable. So let's do this. So what I'm gonna do here is copy all of this. We'll bring this into our CSS file and we're just gonna put this up here. So we have main text color hyphen light and the main text color hyphen dark. So these are all the colors. Now for these, instead of setting these manually like that, what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and do far and let me actually split this up here so you can see it change and we'll do this part manually so we're going to change the main text color and then we're going to reference one over the other so at this point what i could do is main text color and then just do light actually we'll do dark we'll set that so that goes away so the main text color for dark is going to be white and then we're just going to keep modifying it there so let's grab this secondary text color and we're gonna change this, so secondary text color, and that's gonna be for light. Okay, so we see the secondary text color. Then we wanna to go to the main link color, and that much that part won't really change too much. So it's just a different shade of uh, blue that's gonna be there. Main background color, actually let's do main border color. We haven't even used this one yet, but let's go ahead and set it. So main border color, and I should do dark there, not light. And let's go ahead and change this one also. I'll just manually write this out. So we'll just do var, hyphen, hyphen, and then main border color, hyphen, dark. Okay. And this last one is going to be var. So we're basically just repeating it. So main background color and we're just going to add in dark again okay so something's off here let me figure this part out real quick so we just took the colors here main text color dark for some reason the background color wasn't set main bg color so we should see that change let's go ahead and see why this isn't working so we have the background color that's main bg color uh, looks like we added two variables here. I see what's going on. All right. And here we go. So here is dark mode. So to change it, let's just do that real quick. Again, you can add in an automatic theme switcher and all that. But what I'm going to do here is simply just go into here, highlight that, click control D, D and D, select all of them and just do light. And then if I want to change that back, I can just select light, control D, highlight all those and do dark. So that's what it does for us. That's the variable. So awesome. We just set up dark mode. That looks awesome. I love it. Okay. So in our article, we set that up here, tech stack. Let's go ahead and take this section right here. So we're going to create another section, add in a headline and then work on the actual stack itself. So inside of index.html, let's go ahead and create a new section. So we'll do section class is going to be section hyphen hyphen page close that off and then we want a title so we'll just do h2 this is going to be tech stack so that's going to appear right here 
and under that we want to go ahead and just put that in a div and this div is going to have a id of wrapper hyphen hyphen tech stack as one word and then we'll just do double underscore items so that's another uh, bem or b-e-e-m b-e-m method so let's continue from there let's go ahead and add in a div so i'm just going to create little boxes here for the items so what we're going to do here is just go ahead and give a class of card so we're going to have different types of cards and we'll do tech stack and in here we're just going to add in our skills so let's just do a span tag and here i'm just going to add in python javascript for the languages and then node js okay so the first piece will be our languages so let's go ahead and do this separate all your skills or your tech stack in these little cards right here so let's take this one and then let's duplicate it a few times go ahead and separate it into like databases front end back end or whatever you want to do there and just make sure that all of these are out here so put out all your skills there in your tech stack what i'm going to do is actually reference this and i'm just going to copy all these divs so these are all my skills and i just want to make sure we have the real deal so i'm just going to undo what i did here and then paste this in right here inside of that main wrapper we'll fix the indentation and then we're going to style it right away we want to see the output and what we did okay so change that indentation that's what it looks like right now so we'll go back into main.css and in main.css we'll go under qualifications list we're just going to go ahead and do wrapper hyphen hyphen list and this is going to be no not list <laughs> wrapper hyphen hyphen tech stack fix that before it gives us an error and then we'll just do underscore items okay so we have the tech stack there uh we'll just do display flex so we want to inline everything so it's right there not inline blocks but we want to do flex okay so that puts everything in line uh then we want to go ahead and do flex wrap want to make sure that once it actually gets crushed down that it gets wrapped and doesn't overflow our page uh and with that we also want to set a gap we'll just do one em this will give us a shortcut to gap at the top and on the column level so left right up and down and we'll also do font size and i want to make sure this font's a little bit smaller because i don't want a lot of emphasis here so 0 0.9 and that will give us about 14 pixels okay so that's a tech stack the font should be a little bit smaller there the font size 9 em and let's see so after that let's actually work on the card so we do have the card here so card hyphen hyphen tech stack so that's a class here let's go ahead and style that we'll just do border and then that's going to be one pixel in width and we'll just do solid so we want it to be a solid line and we want to set the color and this is going to be variable hyphen hyphen main border color so main border color not background but border color and i don't want to put light in there so we just want the one that's supposed to be with our um, basically with the theme that we have currently set so we have the border you can see there's no padding there and i want to make sure you can see all of that okay so you can still see it even though my face is there okay so we have the border color uh after the border we want to add in some padding so we'll just do whoops what did i click there so we'll do padding hopefully i didn't mess up anything uh for this we'll just do top and bottom at 0 0.5 em i believe that's going to be the top and then one em from left to right so that gives us some padding uh let's also add in a border radius so we want to smooth out those corners we'll do point or we'll do uh five pixels that's going to smooth those out a little bit and let's see i think we're good for this section yeah that looks pretty good okay so that's our tech stack now let's go into our work history so again this is going to be all completely dependent on what you're doing what i'm going to do is build out the first one and then i'm just going to copy and paste everything that i have so uh, let's go ahead and put this under the section page but also make sure you're inside of this main container or container main so we'll add in a new section this is going to have a class here of let's see class 
section hyphen hyphen page and we're gonna do an ID of work history so ID is equal to work history and then we'll just do wrapper okay so that's the work history wrapper and we'll just put an h2 tag here we'll just say work history okay I was trying to figure out how to spell history there so now we're seeing it on the page here so it's all popping up now inside of work history let's go ahead and throw in another div this will be the actual card here so we're going to give this one uh, a card hyphen hyphen of work hyphen history so one hyphen for the second part okay so that's still a card and above this card right here I actually want to create a div and we're going to use this as a line so we're just going to create a div and then add a background color and some kind of height to it and this div is just responsible for creating a line break so we'll just do class line dash break all right so now inside of our card here for work history let's go ahead and get the contents filled out here and I did something to my mouse now it's moving slow okay there we go fixed it so we have our card uh, in here we'll just use a strong tag we'll talk about each job so I'm gonna go ahead and reference my current job I'm a developer advocate at Agora so we'll just do um, here's actually what I'll reference I'm actually gonna take this emoji and paste that in so I'm a developer advocate at Agora so that's all there now using the strong tag and I want to go ahead and throw in my work history or uh, the time frame so I I got hired there on 11 2021 so November and I am still there so present okay so we have our work history there cool that looks good and as far as the contents themselves let's go ahead and throw in a paragraph tag and I'm just gonna paste in what I did there so we're just gonna copy that directly from the article so at Agora, I, I'm a developer advocate, so I work on building components, making sure our SDK is usable, and a bunch of other stuff. So I basically make sure people know how to use our product. Okay, so under that, we'll add in a UL tag. And in the UL tag, we're just gonna put in a bunch of LI tags. So this is not something that you need to do, but I would highly recommend what you do is when you're creating a resume, that you give me specifics at what you specifics of what you did there. So don't just tell me about the job, tell me about like some specific successes and I'll use some examples and I also reference this in that video where I talk about how hiring managers look at resumes so uh, essentially I want to go for specifics like I doubled their usage minutes from 15 million to 30 million minutes within my first four months so that's the success that I had there I can actually uh, prove not prove but uh, I can actually talk about something specific that I did there and a hiring manager can reference that um, produce educational content so they know I can make videos that have been successful on YouTube, SEO campaigns, and so on. So I'm able to extend what I'm actually doing with those skills. So with that, I have my first card here. Uh, if you're adding more content, go ahead and do that so you can copy and paste that. And here you're gonna have different jobs and we're about to style these. So what I'm gonna do here is actually copy the code or the content from here. So I'm gonna expand this and I'm gonna take everything from this first line break all the way down to this closing div because that closes off the section for me so let's go ahead and do that or not do that if you don't have the same content as me don't do it but if you want to just reference mine go ahead and do that so this is actually all my past jobs and so on I've worked more jobs but this is everything that's relevant to tech so we have the content now we want to style that so <coughs> My throat keeps drying up here. Okay, so we have that. Let's go into the actual styling. So let's see. We'll go into main.css. And this is going to be pretty quick. So all I want to do here is style the card. So we'll do card hyphen hyphen work hyphen history. Can't spell history for some reason. And with this, we're just going to go ahead and add a border to the left here. So border left is going to be one pixel solid and for the color we'll just do var hyphen hyphen border color so there we go we see a border there i don't know if you can see that but it's there uh, we also want to add in some padding so let's do that okay so with that uh, let's set up some margin 
let's actually start there. So we'll do margin top. That's going to be three EM. So we'll create some separation. Margin bottom. And that's going to be three EM. So we want to make sure it's separated. Margin top, margin bottom, and padding left. So padding left, that's going to be two EM. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do full screen here. That's what we're trying to go for. Okay, and we also want to make sure it's responsive too. So we're going to get to that part in a bit. And I'm literally like losing <laughs> my voice as I'm talking, but I want to finish this video. Okay, so we also want to uh, work on that line break. So we added in a line break under each section, so or above each section. So all we're going to do here is set a background color, and this is going to be var hyphen hyphen main bg color more main border color actually okay so you can't really see it because it's in the div has no height so it has no actual not context but substance so we'll just add in a height of one pixel and here we go so there are our line breaks so if i go to full screen that looks a lot better all right so let's check this out in white mode or light mode uh, we'll just go ahead and do control D, 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 and we'll do light. Let's make sure it looks good. All right, everything's responding. Uh, there's a few things that look sort of off to me. Let's see, let's actually pull up. You know what, I actually, it might be correct. What I'm gonna do is I'll pause it at some point and I'll just make sure that everything's actually working. Um, seems like the font itself maybe needs to be more bold. Border colors aren't working, that's the issue. So I don't see the border colors right here in white mode. Good thing I checked. So let's go ahead and see what's up here. So light, that's what happened. I actually put an R there and none of those actually applied. So it only looked like it switched back to white mode because the defaults kicked in. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, awesome. That is our digital resume in light mode. Sweet. Okay, so Let's check out the responsiveness. So what I want to do is make sure that when we crush this down, that my picture goes at the top. And also I want to get rid of this left bar right here. Just make sure we have the proper padding in place and just a few little touch ups. So let's go ahead and fix that up. And I think that's the next thing on my list. So projects and accomplishments. Oh, I forgot this section. So with this, uh, let's just build this out real quick. So we create another wrapper and let me just copy this just for the speed of the video because it's a very simple section. So if you want to build it out from scratch, you can do that. So we'll go down here in our HTML and we have a section. So some indentations off, but make sure you're still inside of the main container. So let's see where this ends. This will be after this closing section and we'll just bring this in. So let's paste that in, make sure it looks good. Okay, so it's there without any styling. We still need to style that. So let's go over the actual components here and it looks like I didn't copy everything. So take this, indent it. Okay, so we have a section tag with a class of section page. Then we put in the H2, projects and accomplishments, and then we create a card called card hyphen hyphen project. And then we throw in this emoji with a trophy because it's an accomplishment, we're happy about it. And then we give a preview to what we're actually doing there. And then we link the user to the project page. Now later on, this would actually be different pages. What I'm gonna do is create one page and then have, <clears throat> have the user link <laughs> to that. Okay, so we're just gonna link to one page. And then we just throw in a span tag and that's it. So let's quickly just style this and then we'll work on the actual page for the project. So if I click on the link right now, I feel like I'm dying here with my throat. <laughs> Voice is slowly changing. Okay, so we'll just do a card hyphen hyphen project. So we'll go in here and we'll just do padding top. And that's gonna be one EM and then padding bottom. And that's also gonna be one EM. And after that, so we created some space between those, awesome. Uh, we also wanna go ahead and do border. So we wanna create that separation and we'll use that same border color that we set. So we'll just do border and we'll just do this is gonna be at the top actually so border top and we'll do one pixel 
solid because we want that to be a solid color and we'll just do var hyphen hyphen main border color okay so there we go we have that border color that looks good and let's work on the actual link so i don't want it to be blue i actually want to have a link there but i want to change the color we'll use that blue color in different links um, I guess not later because I don't use it here, but I do like that to be a default later on. Maybe if you want to write an article from this or uh, wherever you want to use it, I just like to set that color. So we'll just do card hyphen project, and we're just going to style the link. It looks like it just auto or remove that. So we have the link here, and for this color, we'll just do main link color. So main link color or main text color, not link color. All right. So there we go. That looks better. And I also want to make sure that when we hover over this, that we actually have a transition. So we'll do trans, not transform, but transition. And for this, we'll just do 0 0.3 seconds. So we want to have a, a slight delay there. So we'll have that transition and then for the actual hover here we'll just do card hyphen project and on hover <clears throat> so on hover let's go ahead and do color this is going to be rgb and let's see i don't know if i want to use rgb what i want to do here let's just do main text color actually so we'll just do we'll use a variable i don't know why i have that in the source code or in the dot in the article but we'll just do main text color so when i hover over that our main link color let's see that is not working oh card project link so we throw in the a tag there so we want to chain that and there we go so that looks a lot better okay awesome so now when we click on this page what happens here? So let me go back to dark mode. I want to use that. I like dark mode a lot better. It's easier on the eyes. So we'll just go ahead and do control D and we'll change that to dark. All right. So we're back and let's go to the project page. So when I click on this, it just takes me to this URL, but there's nothing there. So we'll create a project one dot HTML. So that's linked up already. So we'll just do project one html so this is where you're saying something about your projects giving people some information and you have a chance to brag about it so uh, now if i click on it this will take me to that page there's nothing on it so we'll create that boilerplate html we'll set that up and we'll just do project we won't say anything about it we'll take out the script tag we don't need that uh, i do want to link though to my main css file so we'll go in here scroll and we'll just do dot styles and then we're going to main dot css let's make sure we got that right okay styles main dot css okay so that same css file is linked up and i don't think we need to add in any special css here so for the actual content um, we're just going to go ahead and use the same div of the main container so we'll just do id container hyphen main we'll wrap everything so we want to make sure it's nice and centered we'll create a link back to the home page so we'll just say go back and i have this hex code that will actually give me an arrow to go back so that's also in the article let's see why is that not working so let's do href and let's just do h1 and let's just test it okay so the content should be showing up here Okay, there we go. So I guess I just needed to refresh. So there is our go back link. Now for each project, we do wanna have some kind of headline there. So we wanna be able to brag about it. So let's just go ahead and put an H1 tag right here. And what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and grab one of these. So uh, to go back, we'll just go back to index.html. So the go back link should work. And we'll take built a laboratory management system for a forensics lab and then we'll click on that and we'll paste that in there. So there is our headline. And then for the actual page content, uh, let's just throw in 
first of all, let's throw in some UL tags here and we want to reference source code. So if you have source code, go ahead and do that. So for this, we'll just throw in a link there. If you have source code, always show that. And there we go. And we also want to do live demo. This part is completely up to you as far as the content, but I want to give you a sample of what we're doing. So we have demo and that's it. So we also want people to jump to that link. So we'll just do target and then underscore blank. So we want them to still stay on our website if they click on it. All right, perfect. And for the page content, let's just go ahead and reference this. So what I did here is I just added in two paragraph tags with some lorem ipsum and then two or one UL tag with some links. So maybe you wanna reference some bullet points and what you learned there and so on. So we'll throw that in and that is the page. So there we go. For some reason, it is not being wrapped inside of that main container. So give me one second. Let's see what's going on. Uh, it might be one of these paragraph tags maybe they're not being closed off so those are closed off oh none of that was put into the main div that'll give us a problem put that into the main container save it and let's check it out all right there we go so it doesn't matter which one i click on right now uh it's obviously going to take me to the same one and then obviously update that content throw in some pictures and let's jump to the next section in this article. So making it responsive. So to make it responsive, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and add in a media query because about at about 600 pixels is when it starts breaking. So we're just gonna go ahead and write this media query and update this. So let's try to make this small here. I was already kind of like that, but let's go ahead and drag this over. So that should be at about 600 pixels. We'll see if it's not. So we'll, we'll write our media query, so media, screen and then we'll do and when you look at the source code i think we can actually just do at media and then we'll just do max dash width and at 600 pixels this is what we want the code to do so first of all we're going to take our header section so let's just do class wrapper hyphen hyphen hero and i think that was actually an id so we'll change that we'll make that an id and for this, we're just going to do, let's see, what, what the heck was I doing here? I'm trying to remember. So at this point, um, give me one second. Let me pause this and see what's going on. Okay, so I'm back. I looks like I have some bad code in the article, so I'll make sure to fix those. But in this hero wrapper, what we want to do is change the flex direction. So we want to change that from row to column and that'll make sure that this picture gets rearranged. So hero wrapper, uh, want to make sure that that's the right name or wrapper hero. Let's go back into index.html. We'll go up here. Let's check this out. So we have wrapper hyphen hyphen hero at media screen and max or at media and max width. So maybe this that's not 600 pixels. So let's go ahead and just do inspect element. Okay, so here we go. So at about 600 pixels, there we go. It breaks and that's more like what we wanted. So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and force that in like that. So that should give us at about, put this at about 500 pixels. All right, so with that, we have our hero wrapper. Um, I also don't like the space in between when it comes to mobile, I feel like well, let's see. Um, let's just go ahead and change the actual image. So let's just change that profile picture. So we'll do profile dash pick. Um, at this point, I actually want it bigger. I want to make sure it covers up a little bit more because it looks a little bit weird. So we'll just do 200 pixels and then height. That'll be 200 pixels, not 2000. All right. And yeah, let's just change the line height. So we'll just go into section page and then we'll do adding top. So I believe we have it at two or three pixels, I think. So we'll just do one EM, not pixels, but EM. So that should remove some of that section page padding bottom. Okay, so that should fix some of that. And for this work history section, 
I want to make sure that we have a little bit more spacing here. So for this section, I want to get rid of that line right there. So we'll do card work history and that's going to be border left and that's going to be none. So we'll just remove it completely and we want to add in or we want to remove the padding that's to the left. So we'll just do padding left is zero. Okay. So profile picture wrapper hero, we changed that uh, display hero. Um, yeah, I think we probably could get rid of some of the gap here. I notice there's still too much space here. So we'll just do, let's see, wrapper hero. I think we can try to get rid of gap here in this section. So for gap, let's just do one EM. There we go. So that fixes it. That's what I was trying to do in this part threw me off. I actually have this as a duplicate in my article. So let's bring this up here. Everything looks good with it. It's working light mode works and we have completed the visual design. So the last thing we want to do here is to go ahead and host it. So let's go ahead and do this. So make sure uh, if you're fresh to GitHub, make sure you have Git and GitHub installed. I did link up an article that I, or a video on uploading files to GitHub and how that works. There is more descriptive articles uh, elsewhere. So we don't want to get into that. So let's go ahead and make sure you have Git downloaded and you have a GitHub account. So do that. And from here, create a new repository. So we're just going to go ahead and do the standard. I will just do resume website. So give it a name. Uh, don't worry about the description. If you want to host on GitHub pages, you do have to make it public. I do believe you have to pay if you want it private and still host on GitHub pages. So create the repo. This will be public. And we're just going to go ahead and follow some of these steps here. So I'm not going to rename the main branch. I'm just going to keep it at the default of master and let's go ahead and set that up. So we'll go in here into our project. So if you're using this from the command line, uh, just use the terminal CD into it. But at this point, we're going to run git init. So that's going to initialize a local GitHub repo and then we'll do git status. This will tell us everything that we have in it. We'll add it to that GitHub repo. We'll do git status. If it's blue or green for you, it tells you everything went well. And we'll just do git commit. So we want to add in some kind of message with our commit. So we want to commit these files to our uh, remote branch. So we'll just do first commit for tut. And now actually to push this, what we need to do is we actually need to go here and we need to add this repo. So this is the actual repo. So we need to add that as our remote. So we add it and then we can do git push dash u origin master. So now we're going to take our local commit and push that to our GitHub repo. So it should push it. It's done. So now if I refresh this, here is the code I just worked on. So if we go into index.html, this is everything that I just wrote. So you have your GitHub repo. Now to actually deploy this, we're going to go into settings. Remember, it has to be a public repo. Go into settings and then go into pages. So this is GitHub pages. We're going to deploy from branch and for the branch, we'll just go ahead and set master. We'll point it to root. Make sure your main page is index.html and let's save it. So this might take a second. It's going to give us a URL here in a minute. So let's just give it some time here and I'll look into the article. Let's see if I missed anything. So we want to go ahead and push the code. Make sure we have index.html. Yeah, it looks good. Settings, your live site is there. So let's just refresh this now. So we don't have the live site yet. It might take a minute and it's about to give us a domain. And apparently you can do custom domains. I've never done those before. Not with GitHub pages. I've done it with Vercel and obviously a lot of other platforms, but not here yet. So I don't know why I keep saying obviously today. I just keep repeating that kind of a bad habit. Okay. So deploy from branch master root settings talk amongst yourselves while this is happening <laughs> and let's see custom domain allows you to serve your site from a domain other than Dennis IV 11githubio so whatever your github is so you can buy a domain and probably point to it okay so there we go our site is live now it's at Dennis I or div Ivanov 11 github.io forward slash resume and here we go that is a live link so I'm gonna take that link down Reference the one in the video description because I'm going to keep this one up 
but here is the live link. Now, if I wanna make changes, I just go ahead and make those, push it, and uh, we are good to go. But that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're newer to HTML and CSS, hopefully you learned something. If you are using GitHub Pages for the first time, hope you learned something there and uh, can take something away from this. I would love to see your digital resume. If you wanna share it with me in the comment section, I will go back and look through these. And I do some resume reviews on my channel also. So make sure you follow me there and check that out. So I'll see you all in another video.